still susceptible and we're still on that journey towards becoming, you know, completely indestructible diamond bodies. So lo love your process, accept yourself and protect yourself as you're going. I usually use a little hat and I do sun gaze during the middle of the day. But um, I'll have my hat kind of like over my eyes, and I also have a big awning on my backyard, so I'll be in, sitting in the shade under the awning or sit underneath the tree. That's a beautiful way to get filtered light in the same way that a tree filters the sunlight and grows an apple for you, then you eat the apple and you get the light. You can physically sit under the tree and look through the leaves at the sun and the, the protective energy field of the tree. It's kind of like this. If you imagine the sun is like, um, you know, like the energy center, like the, the power, power supply, the power, the power station, and uh, you have your little toaster, whatever, you know, your little, your little appliance, you can't plug your little appliance directly into the energy center. It would to completely, it would fry your circuits. So what you need to do, like in our neighborhood, we have all these transformers that slow down the energy as it's coming to our little individual house so that when you plug into the wall, it's the right amount, it's the right um, in intensity of energy so it will not fry your electronics. Same exact thing with your mind and your body and your neurology. If you plug directly into the sun and the stars without any of these intervening um, transformers, you know, stepping the energy down, Prepare to fry your circuits, like that, that David Bowie song, um, the Star Man in the Sky, but he thinks he'd blow your mind. That's what would happen. Your mind would get blown. So we don't want that. So this is just like, you don't want to fry yourself by going to Hawaii with no base tan. You want to gradually expose yourself to this level of intensity. And the intensity is not just of the physical light coming to your body, it's of ideas. Because as you eat more light, you grow your light body, you grow your body of consciousness you grow your body of ideas. And that is also a sensory organ. You, photons are feelers. They are the sensory organ of a much larger being within which you find yourself. The more of the sensory organs that you eat, the more sensitive you become. You become a being that has a light body that is a sensory organ for the sun, and you can sense light. You can sense awareness. You can sense consciousness. You can sense the time field directly. So this is why we're doing this work. How do you actually do this work? I sit the way that this figure sits. And I also, I want to annotate, thank you. Oh my goodness. The, the gods of technology have sh smiled upon me and allowed the annotation window to come down. Oh my goodness, guys. You have no idea how challenging it is sometimes. Let's draw this over here like this, over here like this is the sun, right? And these are these wonderful rays of organized photons coming out of the sun. And these represent possibilities and probabilities in terms of time, timelines, and also consciousness. So in order for me to sun gaze, I sit the way that this figure is sitting with my legs crossed comfortably. And um, I, you, I, I do a Merkaba, you can do it, you don't have to. This is really a, a, you know, a different practice than Merkaba. Um, this has to do with now this area of your energetic anatomy. You get a different color so you can actually see it better. I'm using blue, but you can't see that blue. This one right here, right at the center of your head. Well, I'm making a big giant blue dot. Right there, that is where that tendril of attention emanates from. And again, I've described it as something similar to like an elephant's trunk or um, a large, like a long flexible feeler that goes outward from um, the center of your forehead. And it's like a tunnel. And you can create this feeler, this tunnel that reaches all the way up to the sun. And uh, you, can, you can connect to any star, but the sun is the nearest broadcaster of intelligence in our immediate vicinity. And uh, we are also calibrated to eat from this sun. So you have a recipe that's in your body and the food that comes from this sun is like perfect for the recipe of your body. So uh, I sit comfortably like that. One major aspect of doing this um, practice is I place my tip of my tongue on the roof of my mouth. And I would encourage each one of you to find the exact place that feels comfortable to you. Is it totally forward right by your teeth? Is it further backward towards your soft palate? Figure out what's work for, what works for you. But what that does is creates a, a complete circuit. So what you're doing with your body is creating a, like a complete circuit, like a loop like this. And then you're also going to create a complete circuit between your body and the sun, just like you're making a battery, you're getting a circuit. So you send out this tendril to the sun, and then you also have this tendril kind of coming back to you from the sun. And this is how you make the circuit. Um, 
And this touches, this tastes, whatever you're touching on, you taste and you become. So as I'm touching the sun, I'm tasting it and I'm becoming it. So let me change my color here. So this red energy is coming into me through this blue aperture. And um, as I, so also, okay, to contrast, sun gazing is different than sunbathing. I love to sunbathe. I put on my bikini, I put a nice little towel outside on the back grass, and I just lay out there and I relax. And it feels good, it goes on my skin. But that is not the same practice as this. This is not necessarily where you're just um, relaxed or limp. Um, my spine is erect and I'm engaging my muscles of consciousness too, like I'm using my awareness. Um, and I'm using my intention. So I focus on the sun, but I often either have my hat blocking out the physical sun or my eyes are closed or squinted. Or if I'm inside, I'll use like the edge of the window. Like I, I block out the physicality of the sun so that it's not too much for my eyes. But what matters is that my inner eye connects with the sun. And again, I began my practice by doing this only in the daytime and only on sunny days. And as I grew more light muscles, I found that I could connect even when it wasn't a sunny day, even when, when the sun was on the other side of the planet. And um, uh, you know, I could get the nutrition that I needed anytime, but that's because I had to grow my anatomy more. So the more you grow your anatomy, the easier this gets to be done. And how do I do it? I breathe in, I breathe in, as I'm focusing my inner eye on the sun and feeling that light coming into me, uh, let me go back to my, no, no, I'll st just stay here in the little, because I want to show you, like on, on our faces, when you breathe in, you have sinuses that are up here, up above your eyebrows, and that's, that's directly related to this area of your energetic anatomy. I breathe in the sunlight, and I also feel the sinuses here underneath my eyes, filling with light. And then I feel it going down my throat. So now I'll go back to drawing on this little drawing. I feel it going down my throat, just like some kind of a liquid pudding or something like that, down into my belly, even deeper than my, my tummy, deeper than my stomach, and down into my, it's called in the Far East, your hara or your ara. This is like the cauldron of your belly. Yeah, and I kind of sit like with my legs crossed like that because it makes your legs kind of like a bowl. And the, you know, I, I breathe in a couple of times because I breathe in and I'm like, my bowl is a little bit full. And then I have to breathe in again. And I remember I'm keeping my tongue on the t uh, top of my mouth here as I'm breathing in, I'm feeling that growing. And I feel like I'm filling up with sunlight with each breath. And I feel it, I feel it come up to my heart this high. And then I breathe in further. I feel it come up to my throat this high. And then I breathe in even further. And then I feel myself filled all the way up to here. That's like the brim of my coffee cup is almost completely full. And then I got to show you how I do this. Well, I'll show you maybe. No, I'll show you. I'm like, look on the thumbnail here. So I breathe in one more time as my coffee cup gets totally full. And as I'm doing that, I tilt my head back. And I send that energy out through the top of my head, where my ponytail emerges, up out through the top of my head, and then back in through the back of my head. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And then back out through the front of my head to connect with the sun. So now let me draw it for you. The, uh, and as I'm doing that, I tilt my head up. And as I tilt my head up, there's a cascade of energy down the back of my body and down the front of my body. So now let me draw it for you. So the energy comes up to here, the level of like my eyeballs. I'm up to my eyeballs. And then it's like up to the brim of your coffee cup with the final in breath. I feel that energy coming out through the top of my head, through my crown chakra, where my ponytail emerges, out through the back of my head. In here, big arrow in the back of my head. And then back out through the front, you can see I have another arrow going over here. So it makes a shape very similar to the Egyptian ankh. Here I'm drawing a very hastily drawn onk shape. This is like a symbol of life from ancient Egypt. So I call this sometimes doing an onk or um, um, doing like a loop-de-loop -loop with the sun. And um, when I do that, that is like creating a complete circuit. And I feel like that is like reaching completion. Like I ate the meal in various different bites, tasty increments, and then I connected with the sun and then like, boom, the meal is over. And this doesn't have to take that long. It can take a minute, it can take five minutes. You can do the cycle again if you're like, 
I'm still hungry. Like order another course from your, or order another plate from the waiter. Like, you know, I don't know if that ever happens to you. You eat something in a restaurant, you're like, still hungry. Let's get another small plate. Um, so yeah, you can do that. There's no rules against that. And also I encourage everyone to do what feels right for your own body. There's no, like it has to be four breaths. It has to be five breaths. It has to be 17 breaths. There's nothing like that. You do it according to how it is comfortable to you.